Hello friends, this video on chemical effects of current part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question is, how do I know if a substance is a good conductor of electricity or a poor conductor? Like in the previous slide, I gave you few examples of a good conductor and a poor conductor. For example, I said that uh, water is a good conductor and I said that plastic is a poor conductor. But there are so many other substances which we see around us. Now, how do we know which one will allow electricity to pass through it and which one will not? So for that purpose, we make use of a device called tester. So the job of this tester is to test the conductivity of a substance, whether it is a solid or a liquid, the tester can test the conductivity. So it is a device or a setup to test the electrical conductivity of an object. So when I say electrical conductivity, conductivity means the property of a substance to conduct electric current, the property of a substance to allow electric current to pass through it. So how well or how badly a substance allows electric current to pass through it. So that is what we mean by conductivity of an object. Now, uh, if you want to know how exactly a tester looks, you would have seen testers in your uh, science laboratories. In fact, you can build a tester of yourself. So you can create a tester for yourself and how that tester would be, I will just show it to you. So let us suppose we make a setup where we take a bulb, we connect it to a battery or a cell and we have a switch and to this circuit, now we have been constructing this circuit since the first slide, right? So you now know that how you can connect a battery to the bulb. Now in between that circuit, you also connect the substance. Now in this case here, this substance is a metal. So maybe any metal, small cylinder or any metal object. Now what do we want to do? This circuit will actually act as a tester. So this circuit will tell us whether this object, whether this metal is a good conductor or a poor conductor of electric current. So what do we do? Now you switch it on. Now as soon as you switch it on, if this metal is a good conductor, right? So in that case, it will allow current to pass through it, right? If it allows current to pass through it, then in this complete circuit, current should be flowing and the bulb should glow. So here, what do you see? The bulb glows as soon as we switch it on. So when we switch it on, the circuit gets completed. So path is provided for the current to flow. Secondly, since all these materials, the wires as well as the object, they all allow electric current to pass through it. That is also a reason that the bulb could glow. So this shows that this object is a good conductor. So we can say that metal is a good conductor. Now let us say we take another uh, substance. So the same circuit which will act as a tester. So the same circuit but instead of the metal now we have a plastic object. Okay. So now what happens? Again you switch it on. Now when you switch it on the circuit is completed. Path is complete. But since this object doesn't allow electricity to pass through it, therefore the bulb did not glow. So now whether the bulb glows, if the bulb glows, that means the object is a good conductor. If the bulb does not grow, glow, that means the object is a poor conductor. So we can say that this is a poor conductor of electricity and this is a good conductor of electricity. So this is how a tester looks like. So this can be your tester because you can create this simple circuit with the help of a bulb and a battery. Now, how exactly a tester looks which you see in your laboratories? You would have seen the multimeters. So they are used for many purposes. Like there's just one meter box, but it is actually used for measuring current, measuring voltage. So it has multiple purposes, but it can act as a tester as well. So normally you will see that there are two leads. The one, the red and the black leads are the free ends. Now, whenever you want to test something, so what do you do? You will connect this tester to with through these two free ends. So now let us compare this tester with our tester, the test, the simple tester which we created. 
So we created it with the help of a bulb and a battery. So you see, we have connected the two terminals of the bulb to the two terminals of the battery. But what we did, we did not join it because we did not complete the circuit. So these two would be the free ends of the tester. Now, whichever substance we want to check for or we want to test for. So what do we'll we do? We will connect these two free ends of the tester to that substance. Right now, how do we test that the tester is working fine? So testing a tester. So how do we test the tester will work fine? In that case, instead of taking another substance, we just join the free ends of the tester. Now, when you join the free ends of the tester, the circuit becomes complete. Therefore, the bulb should glow. So if the bulb glows, that means the tester is working fine. Now, in a similar way, you can test the tester which is present in your laboratory. Just join the two ends of the tester and you will see that some reading should be shown here. That is, some current should flow through the internal circuit. So, that is how we can check if the tester is working fine or not. So, now that we know we have a tester with us, so we can test the conductivity of a lot of substances and that we are going to do that in the next few slides. So we are now ready with our tester. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.